الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم رواية تعلم وتعالى تذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحق على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على خير اتباع وجهنا ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع نطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك على المدني ومشرف الصوفي هني وهب يغني اللهم إنا نسألك على المدني ومشرف الصوفي هني وهب يغني اللهم إنا نسألك على المدني ومشرف الصوفي هني وهب يغني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا ومن ذريتنا ربي هب لي من لديك ضرورية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء ربي هب لي من لديك ضرورية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء ربي هب لي من لديك ضرورية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء ربي ربي عن هذا بلد آمن وجب وجبني وبني أن أعبد أصناما ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة من ذرية ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة من ذرية ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربي ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة من ذرية ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا ربنا كلنا ولولدي إلينا ربنا كلنا وفينا ربنا كلنا ولولدي إلينا ويقوم الحساب ربي ربنا هبنا من أزواجنا وذريتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا متقين إماما ربنا هبنا من أزواجنا وذريتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا متقين إماما ربنا هبنا من أزواجنا وذريتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا متقين إماما ربي أوزعني أن أشكر لأنه تبقى أن أبدع علي وعلى ويدي والعمل الصالح أرضاه وجعلني برحمة كفي عبارك الصالح ربي أوزعني أن أشكر لأنه تبقى أن أبدع علي وعلى ويدي والعمل الصالح أرضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إن كنت إليك وإني من المسلمين نزل الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين I mentioned a lot of your intentions in the last class. How many of you are? Thank you. 
praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us uh, for this sole purpose uh, of, better, of, of uh, improving ourselves uh, so that we can be better guides and better uh, companions right, to our uh, descendants and our children. Uh, because all of us, you know, if we come here only for one reason, and that we want that we want to see the success of our children in this world in the next. That's all we want. We want to see them succeed you know, and deep in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life in this world and in, in the everlasting uh, abode in the next world. Okay, so Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began these classes, you know, several months ago. Right, we didn't plan to end the classes in Ramadan. Right, we actually planned to finish before Ramadan. Right, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it's uh, ever, you know, uh, this is his great grace and the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he plans for us. And he plans for us whatever he wants to plan for us. And he know we know that we trust in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we trust in the divine wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we trust in the arrangement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he has arranged everything. And not only is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged that the class will end on a on on day in Ramadan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked for us one of the best days of Ramadan which is the 17th of Ramadan, which is the day of the, 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 the revelation, the first revelation of the Quran, and also the day of the Battle of Badr, right, uh, whereby the Muslims were not on the first battle right, against these believers, and in that battle there is so much, so many lessons for us to learn in that one battle, the Battle of Badr, right, and of the greatest, greatest lessons in that battle, right, is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You put in the effort, Allah wants to see the effort, and then the result is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just from that, that one statement, that is your entire life as a parent. <laughs> and as a parent, that's your life. You put in your effort, and then the result is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do as, as He wants. And this is why this, this poem begins. So the beginning of the poem already the Shaykh tells us right, that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives salvation. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives ability to obey him. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who deserves all things. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is bringing up our children. Right? He is the one. Right? It's not us. We just see him. Right? And, and this is our test. This is our, this is our lot. Right? And, and however you bear, how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. Right? But however you turn out, you know, that is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. Right, and we know, you know, that the people can be terrible, terrible parents, and from their loins come sins. And the reverse is also true. Right, people can be, you know, of prophets, prophets, from their loins come disbelievers. You know, and, and that is true. Right, even the prophets will try in their children, in their in their spouses, and all this in the Quran many, many times. In your in your wealth, in your children, you will be tested, you will be tested, you will be tested. So it's a test, it's a test, and right? they happen to come from our loins, right? but you cannot beat yourself up about it. You cannot uh, weigh yourself down about it. Right? You do your best, you do your best, and you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. Can you imagine the kind of hurt or the kind of pain that the Adam felt when he came home and found that one son killed the other son? You know, that kind of pain, right? one son killed the other son. The first murder to happen in human history. Or can you even imagine the kind of hurt that Nabi Noah felt right, when he saw his son, when the waves were very high? It's, it's, it's mentioned in the Quran, very clearly the story is in the Quran, the dialogue between Nabi Noah and his son. Right? And the son uh, is a disbeliever, and Nabi Noah comes with his ark to his son specifically to, to, to save the son. And say, Oh, my son, come up, come up with us onto the ark, and you will be saved. And the son said, no, but I'll go to the highest mountain over there and I will save myself. And then we know how to say, but nobody will be saved on this day, my son. And then the wave comes between them and the son is drunk. Like, we, we read all these stories, but can you imagine the kind of hurt that we know how to The scene happened in his own eyes. That his son died to his people. In his own eyes. And this is where the prophets, the prophets have been tried. Nabi, Nabi Yaakov. <laughs> Ten sons throw away one, throw away their brother into the well. 
issues. Eh? <laughs> it's like, okay, we, we, we have not faced this kind of children. Inshallah, you never, inshallah, Allah will not test us with this kind of children. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's unthinkable. And, and the prophets are the best of parents. It was not anything wrong in their parenting. There was nothing wrong. Prophets are incredible. They don't make mistakes. They don't make mistakes. Right, but and the Yaqub's care and the Yaqub's watch, right? The ten sons, uh, and adult sons, uh, conspired to destroy the young small boy that they used Bala in Salam. Subhanallah. These are realities, realities that we have to understand one thing. I'm not beginning this, the last session video of this. Something so all doom and gloom. It's so bleak. But I understand right, that Allah subhanahu wa wants to see effort. Allah wants effort from you. That's what he wants. Effort, ikhlas, dua. Right? Allah wants you to put in all that you have. All that you have. But whatever happens thereafter, whatever happens thereafter, and all of the Rasulullah is like, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِ And if they turn away, then say, Allah is enough for me. My, my mom actually says that to us. She actually says that to us. <laughs> and then she advises us about the video whatsoever. And if you say you don't take that advice, she will say, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِ Allah. <laughs> I just say that to us. If you turn away, you say, Allah is enough for me, I have that by part. <laughs> that takes a, <laughs> a very strong, you know, grounding. Because she's just done a part to her. She's done a part. I've taught you well. I've taught you what is right and what is wrong. You're adults. Think, think for yourself. Right? You know, but then it's a command to Rasul Sallallahu also. Don't pick yourself up. Don't pick yourself up. Right? They're adults. They can handle themselves. And it's when you they go into because we're going to go into puberty right now. We're going to talk about puberty. And we're going to talk about our adult children. And who are we to them? Who are they to us? And because this is the point where my experience, experience, right, the letting go begins. Right? You're gonna let go, let go, let go. And they're going to make their own decisions. And may Allah so Allah protect them <laughs> and allow them to make good decisions in life. Yeah, but you cannot you cannot force them in life. You cannot. This is the point where you, you just have to just, you know, trust in Allah wa ni'mal You know, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, so alhamdulillah, so Allah has caused us to, to end this on a very special day. I went by to ask and accept it, right, last night and this morning. I this end this day itself, the day of Badr. I do ask and accept it, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many du'as. You said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave mothers, you know, such a great gift. The dua is mustajah. And the dua of the mother is accepted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially for her children, the dua of the mother is never rejected. And so subhanahu wa make your du'as. If you have like, a very prime person, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, and make your du'as, and like, focus, and, and, and inshallah, inshallah, it's a moment. Inshallah. Right, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we go on. And then he says here,
father called me and he said to me, Oh, Sophia, for surely, right, the laws of, ch of childhood have already been cut off from you. We are no longer under the laws of childhood. It is a shari sharia. Sharia for children is no longer applicable to you as a child. And you've entered into the sharia of the adults. Right? And then he says, right, So, فَحْفَذِ الْخَيْرَ لَكُلْ مِنْ أَهْلِ Right, and it says to Sufyan, so guard over all goodness, and you will be of the people of goodness. This is a father who really cares. A father who really cares. So when it comes to puberty, the average puberty, the father puts in effort to talk to the child. Right, to, uh, to explain matters of this world. Right, so he said, that now the sharia of the adult has, has been, uh, is on you. So guard over goodness, you will be of its people. Right, the people of goodness. Okay. And do not, and do not, uh, and do not be fooled, right? Do not be fooled, right? By people praising you, do not be fooled by praises. Mm -hmm. right? don't, 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 don't seek praises, and don't be fooled by praises. He said. Right. And then he said, uh, uh, don't be fooled by praises of what you know, right? Because in reality. All that you know is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says that, and he says that it could be that somebody could say a good thing to you in your face. Right? And then he goes off and he says something evil about you behind your back. Right? So don't be, don't be, don't be taken by people. Right? And don't be so obsessed about what people think and what people say about you. Then he's advice to you, right? And then, uh, and then he says that, uh, and he says that, do not stay far away right, from any bad company. Go there. Stay far away from any bad company, right? And and do not allow, uh, do not allow yourself, right? And do not and and, and do not allow. Right, and do not allow these people right, to pull you into, or to convince you right, that they, what they are on is of goodness. So basically he gave his son advice right, when he actually uh, called his son when he reached puberty. Right, so he was telling anyone right, that, uh, that when, when your children reach puberty, to sit them down and talk to them. Right, in fact, you know what, when we do for puberty, every birthday, Right, every birthday, like our, our community is big on birthdays. Right, but if you're wondering why are we big on birthdays, I will use the big birthdays. Right, because you know, just to just to like cake and have friends and whatsoever. How about make birthdays more more meaningful? Right, that every birthday, now how old are you? Right, oh, you are you know, now 8 years old, you are 9 years old. Right, okay, so what can you promise me of yourself this, this year? Right, what can you say? You know, what can you reflect about your year? And so everything grow up as they grow up, and you reflect, you, you teach them how to reflect every year, and how, what am I going to be this year, and why am I going to leave, why am I going to, to, to work on, and then you write it, you know, big, big, you write it really big in your house, that this is your birthday uh, promise, that like, you know, and that this year, I promise right, that I will control my temper more, for example, and this year, I promise that as I'm growing older, I'm going to, uh, 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 help out around, help out around the house more. For example, whatever. Right, so every year, right, and this is how you help them improve their character. And let them choose for themselves. Right, choose for themselves. Right, what they want every year. Right, on their birthday, what do you want to be? Of the characters of a small, small or one. Then what you have to implement in yourself. And you do it to yourself also, right? Because we you, you improve every single year. So you don't like you know, you're twenty, you're thirty, you're forty, you're the same person. And you need to be improving right, in your character. Right. So here, right, and then he continues and he says, so here is all the stories that I actually told, told before. A lot of stories that he mentions, but most of them I mentioned it in the previous, in the earlier parts of the, of the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just give me a little bit. All right. Then he says, <laughs> Alright, so he says, in the book of 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, I'm pusakum wa ahali. Oh, I'm pusakum wa ahalakum naro. Right, so, which means protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran, protect yourselves and your family in the hellfire. And then he says, it's understood anybody who is under you. Right, anybody who is under your care, it is on you to actually protect them from the hellfire. And then he says here, and what is meant by protection? What is meant by protection is first and foremost the tafti. Right? Tafti means how many is understanding. Right? The understanding of the shah. And that is where one, one way of protection will come. To understand the, the intellectual development of the child and to protect it right? from, being, uh, from being intoxicated uh, or from being poisoned right? by the mentalities of the time. Like, uh, every time will have poison in their mentalities. Right? So you're going to protect that. Right? And then the second one, Ta'di. Right? Ta'di is discipline or to instill adab, to instill mannerisms in your child. Right? So that goes under character uh, protection, to protect their character. Right? So when you see bad character emerge from them, right? then you know, really do the moments you do us, and you do us, and then really think this through on how do you actually you know, make it a priority in yourself and to remove this bad character of them. Right? Especially if they're at this age of puberty and right? they're growing older. Right? Do not allow a bad character to sit right, in your children. Right? And then the, the third one, right? you have a lot of studying. Right? That means studying together with your children, learning. Learning more and more and more. Do not, do not, do not stop the learning you know, of religion with your children. So as you grow older, you go to like, other books with them or go for classes together if you can't really want to teach them. And so the, it has to be this. It has to be like that. You know, together you go for classes and then they are already uh, in puberty when they are adults. And, and then talk about the class there. Right? So that you can at least, that is one of the ways whereby you make sure that you are on the same mindset. You are on the same goal. You are on the same view. Right? As your children, they go for the same class. And you can see what they understand and what they don't understand. And Shia Hamza, he says that every Friday he brings his boys for Surat Jumat. And he has five boys there. Shia Hamza, five boys for Shia right, So uh, he will bring his boys right, for Surat Jumat. Right, and after every uh, Surat Jumat, they will go out. And you bring them out for ice cream or something. It's just for Jumat, you know, for Friday. As a father, as a father, so as Friday, you will bring out the boys of Surat Jumat. And over ice cream, they will discuss the hook. So you discuss what was it in the hookah. Right? To see you know, how, what they actually understood. And you see the boys were like 8 years old, 9 years old, they are small boys. Right? But then he, the father would do this. The father would sit down and see what do you want to do in the hookah. What's the goal in the hookah. Right? So, and, and discuss with the sense. And make it a priority with this, uh, with, uh, with his sense. And so, you know, so to understand, to, to, to have a lot of learning and study from your children. With your children, what the hell will be? Right, the Hadithi right, it is the, the purification of the self, right, to purify yourself. Right, so the one also involves other character also, right, character, character and speech of your children. Because now they are adults, right, and you're going to be um, pointing out like, what should not still be there as right, adults, you know, and, and how to improve their character as they go along. Right, you, don't want to, you don't want to have monster adults in the house. Like, or root it out. So then you don't spot it out. So you don't want any of that. Right? But it is the thing uh, in, 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 in good character. Right? So here, right, so here, right, actually, it's all of it has been discussed from before. Here's doing the summary. Right? So for me, I, that's how much, how much I can actually see. I go into the summary. I do, do protect our children. Right? And do the end of the poem already. Right, and this is the hadith. And the hadith is the name that being Mursali, Muhammad in the Mu'alzam in Mubajjali. And then, we are the people of the Islamiyah. 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 We are the people of the Whereby Rasulullah SAW says, Kullu mawdoori huladu an fitra Hatta du'arida anhu lisanihu Fa'abawahu yuhawbidani Wa yudassirani Wa yubajjisani right, So he says, Rasulullah says here that Every child is, is born on a natural disposition 
by and the ulama is it the decision is the decision of Islam. That means for them to be naturally attracted towards Islam. Right? And until he's able to speak. It means he is on this natural uh, 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 way of Islam until he begins to speak. Right? And then the father makes him into a Jew or a Christian or a fire worshipper. Right? That the parents, the parents are able to change each other. So which means that the parents, right? So and, and they did, they did like a study, there was one sister was a study whereby they had children of atheist parents. Right, children of Indian parents, and these children were below uh, Tamiz, and these three years old, four years old, right? And when they did some tests right, on these children without the parents around, right, they found that most of these children were believers in God. They actually believe in God. Right? Naturally, the human being believes in God. They know about God. They know about higher power. And so naturally, they all believe in God. But as they grow older, their Indian parents will, 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 will put up that human being. God, there is no one. Or the dunya will distract them from the beginning of God. Right, so the highest story starts through every child is born on the natural people of Islam. And then the parents are the ones who change them. Right, and they influence them. So here it says that this is how this shows you if you can really affect the vision of your child. It means you are a very strong influencer in your child's life. Right, so then he says right, so then he says uh, There are a lot of stories here like, about how we are and everything. Right, but I spoke most of them. I said not my story about the boy who complained about his father. Right, uh, the father, the father complained about him first, saying that he hit me and was over. It's all here. It's all in the back of the book. And you tell me all the stories that I mentioned in the beginning of the class. It's all there. Right, so and I'll read you one story. I went by uh, was it Muhammad? Right, uh, uh. I was also in the before. <laughs> and the story whereby he, the, uh, the young man, he was, uh, he was once at night, he saw his uncle praying, and his uncle gave advice, and he grew up. And he, he, actually, the story goes that he actually, by the age of uh, 6, he memorized the Quran. Right? And, then, by the age, and he never ever to be a lost bound in his life. Right? That is the, the upbringing of his uncle. Yeah. So, actually, you're looking at all of these things. I saw it at the back of the book. I didn't realize that all three stories that were, they were actually occur at the back of the book. Okay. <laughs> right, subhanallah. Right. So then he says here, right, so he then says here, فَإِنْهُ مَسَقَاهُ لِسُوَابِ يُشَارِكَ هُكُونْ لِسْتِذَا وَهَابِ And if the parent is the one who pushes the child towards what is good, then he will share the child in the uh, reward. And the last one, and, and if I inshaqi wa da'a and if they are negligent and they allow him to fall from their hands, and they sort of fall out of their hands, then uh, the sin of the child will also fall over the parents. The sin of the child will fall over the parents. Right. And then he ends off the the, 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 the poem and by saying, and this it is the training of children, right, or the education of children. Jama'atuha manduma jama'ani I have written it in, in, in a poetic form Mufida tanikunni man ra'aha It is beneficial to whosoever has seen it Wa tabbar al-ashya bimuqtadaha And they are able to ponder over the, 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 the affair as how it should be pondered over Allahu yahdil kulla lir rashadi bihista'antu fahuwa khairul hadi and Allah is the one who eventually He is the one who guides to all to all righteousness. And in Him I seek help. And He is the one who is the best of helpers. Allah subhanahu wa taala. And He ends up with salawat. Thumma salatu baada hafli Rabbi ala Nabi Mustafa bin Kaabi wa kulli al min Nabi wa tabi'i ma la hubarku fi sahabi Right, and then he ends with salawat to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, and on the uh, onto his family, right, and, and on the tabi'in, right, on those who follow, right, for as long as uh, the lightning flashes in the sky. Right, this is how he speak that. Right. So that's the poem from the CBI. Right. We will do a revision. Right, a revision of what he has been taken. So I want to finish it quickly. Right, so that we can do a revision of what he has been taken. Right, so, so we see that this book, and it begins from before, from actually before conception. Right, 
his parenting begins from in the in, in Christian societies, parenting begins from puberty. So you're seeing a cycle, eh? It's like now it's puberty, they're going to prepare to be parents. <laughs> because we're gonna bury your children soon. Uh, because puberty it means you're ready to have a child. I mean physically, physically you can have a child. Right? Because someone who has reached puberty. Right. So so at puberty, at puberty they actually teach their children that to us that we always read at the beginning of class. So they begin to recite these du'as from the time they reach people. Whether or not they want to get married, is it better? I said, at the time of 12, 13, 14, right? They begin to read Rabbana, 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 after every solat. I said, by from that time, they started. That time. I mean, the du'a is not just when after they got married and after they got, they got their child. The du'as began like way before they got married. <laughs> du'as, right? To of all righteous children. Right, and then, uh, and then, uh, so, 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 we, that's right, you know, this, you know, discussion. Right, so instead of before conception, right, that means at puberty, it starts, right, you start looking to us at puberty, right, and then, as your child grows older, or as a human being grows older, and he goes into the age whereby he is, uh, uh, he is a marriageable age. And so actually, as he grows older, he should be expanding in his religion. Okay, I know a lot of us as we feel we are already parents right now and we wish we knew more. <laughs> and we wish we learned more before we actually got these kids. Right? We wish we actually you know, stand up more, learn more, memorize more, know more stories, know more this, know more that. Right? So, okay, that is our regret. That is our regret. We don't know all these things. And no one told us anything. Right? Now you know. Right? Now you know. So your children, you bring them up there. You bring them up there. Uh, but they are educated on all these things, so they can go out and they can and bring up their own children. Where well, inshallah, your lineage will get better and better and better as as it goes through the time. And inshallah, after the time of uh, Isa alayhi salam, whereby they will be those who support the Isa alayhi salam. Right. So, 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 parenting begins in your youth. Right. It begins in you know, like, uh, like maybe so far away from that. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to tell you because so as you can guide your nephews, your nieces, your cousins, your who are your own children. Right, that when they when you when your, when your daughter reaches the age of 15, 16, are you going to have to talk to her, you know, about 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 learning and deepening her knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all about the religion. And then it starts, it starts there, it starts there. So now the stage of marriage, right? Marriage to choose a good father for the child. Right? That is part of parenting. And when you see the man that you want to marry, you don't see what who is the best husband for me, you know. You see who is the best father for my children. You see that first. Right? And, and on the man's side, same thing. When he chooses a wife, he's choosing a mother for his children. And especially before, it's one of the rights of, the, of a child that his father chose a good mother for him. It's a right, it's one of the rights of the child. And his father shows a good mother for him. So these are all you know, that, you know, uh, uh, for us, we pass that stage. Lah. And we all pass that stage. And, but to help those who are not there yet. And right? not there yet. To teach them that when you look at somebody, so as your, your teenage daughter is growing up, or your teenage son is growing up, and everything, right? and, they, and all the while they might get involved with other people, they might, you know, they, they're in that age, but they might get involved right, with the office gender and whatsoever. Right, then you have to be a guiding voice to them. Right, but the foremost halal and haram must be clear. Right, and secondly, when you are, if you are looking at the opposite gender, you are looking at the spouse. Understand that? Right, you are not playing. Don't play. And right, that is the most, that is the most uh, foolish thing that you could actually do. You to play with the other gender. Right, but looking into, looking at them as you are looking for a spouse. Right, a spouse. And so, and if you see anyone who is worthy of, or you, you like to have, uh, to, to be the, the parent of your children, and right, to share with you in this parenting journey, right, then uh, the appropriate measures, the appropriate measures for you to do, right, and then once it is, you know, uh, happening the marriage, right, then it is on both of them to actually learn up about parenting, way before the marriage. And so many of people, they get engaged for a year, two years, and none of them actually go into learning about parenting. <laughs> and why? Eh? Why did no one ever say to us, you're engaged for a year? Go and learn about parenting. <laughs> I mean, 
be they should be the first thing in your, in your mind. Because you get married, kids will come along. Okay. And you don't want to be blur <laughs> and enter into a bad thing, you broke what you're doing. No. Anybody who is engaged in engagement party, like should be all the books of them. Because <laughs> you know parenting stuff, well being this stuff. Right, or no problems about parenting, you got you got to you know get married. Right. And of course about about the household. Okay. So the engagement period, all that is all learn, 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 parenting, do something. So, okay, so then now marriage, marriage, right? With marriage, the du'as of, you mentioned the du'as of uh, the cause. Alright, make sure you memorize it. Make sure it's memorized, they all married here. <laughs> make sure the du'a of the cause is memorized. The du'a is before it's the cause, hajjah. Right, so all of these things, they, they, they fall into, into play. The niyat of marriage, right? Uh, the book of intentions has the intentions of marriage. Why do you get married? And in there, if there are strong intentions of righteous children. And so all the things will be there. And so we are back kicking. <laughs> so and then and then at conception. Right? If conception happens. Right? If conception happens, do as what Sidana Maram's mother did. Right. So the Maram's mother Hannah, right, she uh, you have to vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she did, she vowed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and her husband got upset with her for doing that and the story goes to her was very upset with her for vowing the child to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you don't know if it's a boy or a girl because she vowed that he would be the custodian of Bani Bakhtis which was too sure was a boy right? so, so the, her husband, Sayyidina uh, Imran was very upset with her right? some of the wife, he said that he divorced her Allah right? Allah 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 and the other wife Right, that he was actually very upset with her for doing that. Right. So don't vow. <laughs> I don't vow. Right, but make an intention. I right, make intentions. Because vows you help your vows. Don't vow. Right, you make intentions as to what this you know what and you write it down. Write it down. And right, what you want for this child. And right, what you intending for this child for Allah right, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Write it down, make it clear. Right? On on her, on on the, on this uh, conception. Then the pregnancy part. We went through in detail, right, every month on the fourth, week, on the fourth month when the room is being drawn, drawn in, right, to have increase in your du'as, in your go to as many months as you can, right, especially if it's your first child. Right, your first child, you have no other kid to, uh, to actually drag along <laughs> to my place. Your first child, you're a free bird, right, so you should really go all out and really get as much burkat as possible on this first child, right, so because no other kid to, to drag around. Right, so we can go for your Umrah, go for your Hajj, go for pieces of blessings, go for all these mamas, make your dua, go to all the awliya, the saints, make them pray over your tummy and whatsoever, do all that you can. Right, especially if it's first one, one second, third, 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 so the first part is all of us, to us, to us, to us, to us, until, right, uh, now the child comes out, right, and we spoke about what you can recite and delivery, we also spoke about what you can control when you are pregnant, right, and it's very important to control your emotions, it's very difficult, it's very difficult, right, because you are hormones all over the place, right, but it's very important, it's very important, because then the emotions enter the child, Right, it goes into your blood. Right, it goes into your child. Right, in this religion, we believe in energies. In Islam, there's a lot, a lot of talk about energies. Negative energy, positive energy. Right, so if you have negative emotions, then you're always instilling in this child negative emotions. And so don't be, and you are the direct cause of it. Because you, he's in you. He has no choice but to be exposed to your negative emotions. So be as positive as you can. Right, and get your hands in on it also. Right, so you know, we want our child to be positive, right? So you have to be good to me. <laughs> Don't annoy me when I'm pregnant, right? <laughs> right like you have to go all out, okay? Keep me happy. <laughs> right, so I have, 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 have honest, honest discussion. Honest discussion that, you know, I'm trying to maintain my cool, right, through when I am pregnant. And right, so it's not enough. Because the child, and this is the worst thing that you could be when you're pregnant, is angry. It's the worst thing you could be. Angry. <laughs> 
because of anger and his attack. And he lends anger before he even comes to this world. <laughs> now I tell you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like Luana. It's Luana. Huh? <laughs> Be calm. Slow it, slow it, slow it. So, you have, so before pregnancy, you must have this, this habit of doing a lot of slow it. <coughs> Keeping your cool. Don't be emotional. Don't be angry. It's before it actually happens. And it's a training of the self. And it brings down your energy. So when it actually happens, that you don't actually get so angry about it and so upset about it. You need to. You need to. Right? And ask your husband to help you help your in on this. Because right? it's one where you want to, to have calm children. Right? Calm. And it comes from you. And the ulama say that women, uh, women who are pregnant will raise their voices and talk back against their husbands. Then be prepared to have kids who will raise their voice and talk back against you. Right. You will come back. You will come back. Right. So, <laughs> right. Shut your mouth, keep quiet, hold your, hold your breath, slow it, take care, go take mudu, do whatever you, you know it takes. Right. Because you will come back. You will come back. Right. The, child, the child will do to the mother as how she did to her husband. The child will do to the mother as how she did to her husband. Well, she is pregnant. Now you're in my bed. This is what the scholars say. said. Right, so, hang on. So when the child is born, now we go into the poem right, of breastfeeding. Right, and again, breastfeeding, put and emotions are two things. There's two inputs from you to your child. Put and emotions. Right, don't breastfeed your child when you are so angry. Right, or when you are so upset and you are so whatever. You don't, you are giving all your emotions. Because the hadith is clear, I right? beware of the wetness, for she gives more than just milk. And right? you're giving the child more than just milk. You don't think it's just milk. It's not. And right? you're giving the child, you're giving the child your stick. Right? So you are, you need to say the bad thing is learning of you. <laughs> you are being trained. Right? Because you can't, you can't, you, know, you only want to, 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 to give this kind thing. It's right. You have to be trained. It's all the training on its own for parents right? for the very beginning. Because they be exposed to you. And then, so then, so then, so then, so then, so then the marhala, and the marhala meaning the different uh, periods, right? So you have before marriage, right? Then you have marriage itself before conception, right? And then you have conception itself, right? And then you have the pregnancy. And then you have uh, the birth till uh, tanis, the baby, right? So here we will really speak about uh, discipline. Because now the child's character begins to show, right? And we mentioned that in Islam, right, it is for the non mumayyis for the non mumayyis it is gentleness, gentleness, gentleness. That means no heart, no, no, no hitting, right? No hitting, right? No pinching, right? No, no hurting of the child, no physical hurt of the child. And as far as you can, no raising of the voice. Because your child will learn to raise the voice if you are raising, raising your voice. And we know even of our kids who, who raise their voice, even we don't know raise our voice. They still raise their voice. And right? so even worse, if you are if you are a screamer, don't be a screamer to your children, nor to your husband. Either way. Right? So 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 first and foremost, be a calm disciplinarian. Right? Calm disciplinarian. Right? Firm is firm. And you have to be firm. You have to be firm. Right? The worst you mentioned about emotional about emotional health of the child. Right? The worst thing that you could do is to give the child is, uh, uh, let him have his way every single time. That's the worst thing you could do. The worst thing. Right? And teach your child to respect you as the parent. So even at uh, before Tamis, they need to know authority of parents. Right? But firm not firm. Without shouting, screaming, without hitting nothing. Right? But just firm. firm. Of course the dental level will be there. Right? But then, just don't bite, just don't bite, be that way. Right? And then as you go into Tamiz, it, it, it should be getting easier. Tamiz, if this part, it should be getting easier because then you can make them understand why cannot. Right? But the first part before Tamiz, you can't understand, it is, I hear and I obey. I hear and I obey. You need to hear and I obey. Right? So it is from that, from this. Right? There is, uh, what's in the moment? There is a 
uh, if you need to punish them, if you want, if you want, if you need to punish them before the age of ten years, then the punishment that have been mentioned, right, is uh, like to make them in the Taubat corner, <laughs> the the different Taubat. Right, so the carpet there, put carpet there, right, put us be there. <laughs> Right, then they actually do it, they do it, they have a carpet, that's been most of them, it's too far. So I try to say, it's too far, it's too far, my mind is too far. It plays with something, whatsoever. Right, but it comes in now, I make them do their wudu, however their wudu is as a matter. Right, just do some wudu. Right, so anyway, right, so this is the basically how you actually uh, calm them down, or you throw water on them. You <laughs> can't take wudu, you throw water on them. Wait, 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 it will come to me. It will come to me. Try, try. Okay, I'll set more. No, no, you take not throw the bucket at them. Nah, I mean, you make your hand wet, you wipe your faces for them. You wipe your hand. I'm a bucket at them. No, what's the matter? Oh, and then. Right there, Jen. So, you know, I think it's pretty old. I will play the water. So, instead of. Which means that what you say goes. What you say has to necessarily go. Even if it takes a very long time for it to go. <laughs> and because the usual it's gonna do their tantrum, they're gonna they throw, they're gonna they're gonna scream and shout and whatsoever, but don't give in to tantrums. Alright. Alright, so at so after tamis, okay, and then education and education. So for before tamis, the education is verbal. Right, verbal and uh one on one. Uh, human to human interactions, like songs, games, uh, rhymes, right? It's a lot of verbal interaction. You are building, you are building their language. Their language is being built, right? An expression. Okay. So really, uh, if if right now you still have not got to the point about the gadgets, I'm repeating myself there. Eh? Gadgets, try to get rid of them. Try to get rid of them. Try, try our parents, our grandparents, before that, everybody grew up with our gadgets. Right? So it's not a must that they must have, that they, they can only grow up with gadgets. But it is just a free ticket to free time for us. So we have to be honest, right? The gadgets are there just to give us an easier time. That's all they are. They are not at all necessary. At all. If they were, they should have been there from the beginning of time. You know, from the other side. But human beings throughout time never had gadgets. And their teachers were what? Human beings. Other human beings were their teachers. I so don't say, oh, educational, oh, this, oh, that. No. No. Our Prophet was taught by a human being. Right? His mother taught him. Sayyidina Halima Sa'adiya taught him. Right? His language was refined because he lived to Sayyidina Halima Sa'adiya. And she had fine language. And she had very high vocabulary. And so she took that from her. Right, as this weapons. Because the Bedouins at the time, they were known for the, 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 the fineness of their culture and language. Right, so, you know, watch you know, who we are around. Right? And, and it's one of the times that was exposed so much to so many kinds of videos. Right, that, that this child actually grew up speaking the cartoon characters. Right, speaking the cartoon characters. Very weird, very weird intonations. And then you wonder, how can this person speak like that? I realize that she's actually copying the cartoon characters. So she speaks to people like, like a cartoon. It's so weird. It's so weird. So she's a self functioning way. Right? Because of the excessive exposure to cartoons. Every day when she wakes up, she sleeps, she's in front of the car. Right? And the parent allows it. But it's easy for the parent. Easy. Let's just throw them a video and, and, and they're, they're caught. <laughs> and they don't do much about, 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 about them. And, but that is me. That is me. And, and it can be argued that it's actually, you know, although I don't know this will come on a day of judgment. Uh, because we don't know the extent of how this of how these uh, videos affect their brain. And uh, so it could be a form of volume. It could be a form of oppression. Because you know, we don't know how many 
because they have they have brains that are still developing, right? Still developing brains. Like the kind of lights that is being exposed, with the eyes, everything, you know, the character. So we don't know the extent, the extent of the damage right, of this uh, object. So as far as you can, just don't even give it to them. Don't even start them off on it, because once you set them off on it, then you can't stop it. Right? Just don't start. No, but now if you're certain, then we off. You need to wean off. Right? So if they are already on it, then start to cut down the hours and eventually get rid of it. And do that way. Uh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so now, okay, so okay, okay, any questions now? As I go along, any questions? Throw out your questions. Because you went through every single age group. So if you, have, if you still have issues right, about disciplining, you have issues about uh, what do I expect of my child at this age, you have issues about education, about emotional education about spiritual education, about religious education, ask now. And you want to ask your questions. Or oh, you have no issues, you are, you are conquering this bad thing. This age group doesn't work for a special child, right? Yes. That's it. For a special child, and how many I actually was in with this uh, uh, five-day daura on the, on the field of special needs. Very interesting when she was working with you know, a few weeks ago, and basically for special needs, special needs, you need to be able to. If you have a child who is special, who has special needs, you need to be able to identify to what extent are they behind this. That is the the, the the core thing. That is the core thing. You need to as, understand to what extent they are behind this. You must know, right? And I know, and I have cousins who are autistic. Right, uh, that their mumayisness varies through the day. <laughs> like through the day, they can be mumayis, not mumayis, mumayis, not mumayis, mumayis. So in the day, they go up and down uh, in, their, in, 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 in what they are able to understand and when. Right, so the parent is to, of course, it's a, it's a test on you. Right, but Shilma Khatib was saying, you know, you know what, it's a very big test of parents who have all of these three children. Right, but they will intercede for you on day of is it they are a free ticket for you for a year of judgment? You will be Because you used to be good to them and you used to bring them up. Right, so, first of all, what he mentioned for special needs is a good question. So if, especially if you have relatives, friends who have to handle special needs children, right, they need to be aware what is the level of mindlessness in the child at that moment in time. So, as to be able to know what are the lengths to take when it comes to teaching and disciplining. It's a continuous effort. It's a continuous effort. But you have to be aware. Right? And if you also mentioned that you know, the thing about all these children is that when you reach Bali, because they're still not in my use. They are not in my use. And you must understand that the pen is lifted off of them. Right? The pen is lifted off of them. They, you, you command them to the prayer in the fasting as far as you can. Right? But if they can't or they refuse, they have a meltdown or whatsoever, you don't force it. Right? They are not, they are special needs. Right? It's one thing. But he said, understand what even though they are special needs, when they reach puberty, they have the they have the nuts of an adult. You no, be aware of it. They are an adult in the body, in, in the mind of the child, right? And they can harm. They can harm. They can harm others, right? So as the as the parent who is over them, you need to be watching. Right, and you need to know what are they watching. I know, I know some of these children and parents don't watch what they watch online. And we know the film online. So the authentic child being addicted to the film online. And that is dangerous. Because no mind is but having the physique of a man. I mean, the mind of a child or the physique of a man. That is a very dangerous thing, especially if we have girls around in the house. Uh, it's very so the parents will neglect food of them. Right? They say, oh my child is autistic. He, 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 he can't commit sins. It's true, he can't commit sins, but he can harm. There is no sin on him. Even if he, even if he harms anybody, there is no sin because he can't think for himself. Right? But but when he harm the whomsoever he harms, yes he will. He can. He can harm. Right? So it's important it's on the parents, it's on the parents to be aware. And on the parents to know. Right. So since so, so, Shiyama Hatib, when he mentioned about this, he was, he was very clear and he was, and he was very open about it. 
is it that you have adults in your house visiting of an adult but mind of a child they can really harm the younger ones in the house and they have no sin no sin right? the sin is on you in fact right? for not being aware you are the woman is one here right? the, if the sin is on the woman is one that's just you <laughs> right? so, so, so when it comes to opposite children it comes to children you need to be aware of their woman isness Right? And then from, from how you are aware of that, that's how you command them to religion. And the best thing is to place them on the path of religion. They can memorize Quran. Can, put them on, on whatever, you know, on religion. Don't let them waste their time with other things. Right? But inshallah, we will uh, reward those who are struggling with this. Right? Okay, other questions? This, because most of you, most of you, are, I, I'm pausing at this stage because most of you are at this stage. Right? Zero dummies. And most of you are here right now. I think some of you have Tamiz kids somewhere around, <laughs> right? But most of you, your kids are all Tamiz. Right? Only one Tamiz, right? hopefully. <laughs> right? but, but so, ask your questions about the non Tamiz kids. Right? They are issues. <laughs> they are interesting. They are interesting, the non Tamiz kids. You <laughs> say that non Tamiz kid picks up the behavior of the one that is older. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. The Tamiz one. And then, so what is, how do you. So the one that is older, then you 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 try to you try to parent via discipline. Right? So then you have to be gentle on the one that is not right? So how do you how do you straddle the two parenting styles uh, without looking like you are uh, yeah, parenting the one that is younger? Mm. The Mumayis one says the Mumayis the Mumayis child, eh? He has a uh, formal discipline on him, yeah. right? So. So first and foremost, right, same thing, there are lines to be drawn. Right, lines to be drawn. So if the non mumayis child is imitating bad behavior from the mumayis child, and from the older child, yes, it's a hard. Why should we do this boy? <laughs> okay, so any so so no good question. Right, so now your non Mumayish child is imitating bad behavior from your Mumayish child. Right, so, so you have to certain Mumayish child also. Right, and, and his certain is going to be with respect to his age. So if he's 8, 9 years old, right, then it's going to be a lot of uh, a firmness right, with this child. Still no kin, eh? still no physical affliction. None whatsoever. None. No physical affliction at all. I cannot emphasize this enough. Right? But firmness, sternness, right? because he is growing, he's going to be bad soon. He needs to wake up. Right? So firmness, sternness, right? and no budget. Right? There is no means no, I say means I say. I, I am your brother. But you, you can go on the side of making him understand the affair right, of the parent. To understand. That I know what's good for you. Right? I know why. Yeah, this has been like trust me. Right? This is the one I say, well, well, you should have your own thing on, on, on that job. The non Mayish child now. Right? He's seeing his behavior right? of the older sibling. Right? And you can't do the same thing for the non Mayish. He is going to imitate his older sibling in rebellion. Right? So the older sibling is rebellious, the younger one is still going to be rebellious. Okay? But the thing about the line that you're going to draw, right? if you say something, it's a no. Keep to it. Keep to it. Don't don't bow. Don't bow. Don't. Mayis or don't mayis don't bow. Because that teaches them that if if my mother says no, it can still be a yes. It will teach them that. But there's always somebody else who says yes. Another issue. (laughs) Okay, by right, uh, by right, if it's husband and wife issues, eh? It's a grandmother issue, so... Oh, oh dear. <laughs> okay, by right, okay, of course, like, you get to talk to your grandparents, your in-laws, eh? Okay, in-laws, husband talk, okay? You don't know where to talk to your parents. <laughs> husband talk to his parents, right? You talk to your parents, right? Don't, don't try to... Uh, unless you have very good relations with your, your in-laws and by all means, right? Talk to your in-laws, right? But make it clear to your... Make it clear to the grandparents, right, that you are parenting your child. You are parenting your child, don't get involved in this. Don't. Right, because 
what, is their, what they are doing is they are undermining your authority. Basically, frankly put, they are undermining your authority. And it's difficult, it's difficult. And, but they need to understand that they are doing the child a disservice by allowing it. Right, my, uh, I have my nephew, like his father confiscated his phone. And then he saw him wrong. I, because he didn't do well for his, uh, his, his, his exams. So his phone got confiscated because he was paying for shelter for now. Father confiscated. Right, the grandfather went to buy it. To buy a phone for his grandson. Right. My sister, uh, uh, this is my husband's my, side. My, my husband went to tell his father to not to do it. But I see that. Because the boy is being good. Right. So nicely, nicely, tell them nicely. And you're undermining what I'm trying to do in my child. Right. That is one thing. Right. So if there are people who are undermining your authority with your children, you need to really talk to them. Right. Because they, they, they make things worse. Especially if it's between husband and wife. If husband say can, wife say cannot, or your father say can, mother say cannot, there's a terrible mix. Because now your children will play with you. You're going to be objects of pain. Right, you can't get from her to mother, go to father. You can't get from to mother. Right, so then you're going to be, you're going to be point with your own kids. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs>